what I had to share, uh, the burden on my heart recently that God has put on my heart is about um, taking sin lightly. Please turn to Jude chapter 1. And verse 4 says, uh, Certain persons have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. And the part I wanted to underline here was, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness. Uh, my understanding of licentiousness means a license to sin. It's, it's, um, it's like he's talking about ungodly people who claim to be following Jesus, but they, have, they take God's grace and they say, praise God, he's forgiven us for everything and he's going to forgive us for everything. We can sin all we want now. Uh, it's like they had a free license to sin. Like, a, like let's say a, a, a man was immune to um, getting traffic tickets. And then so he just goes, drives crazy however he wants. And he gets pulled over by a cop and he just shows this card. Oh, he gets let go every time. So he drives as fast as he wants. He's reckless. Um, and Jude is saying, uh, ungodly people will treat the grace of God like that. Um, and they took sin lightly. He's talking about these people that crept into the church. And as Christians, that's one of the most shameful attitudes we can have and say, I can indulge in sin now because I'm forgiven. Um, but I, I've seen that temptation to think that way too, to, to not think as much of sin because I know that I'm saved and I have security. Um, and to think, oh, well, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, I can't really, um, you know, I can't really have uh, that. I can't really pay that much attention. It's too much work. There's so much sin in me anyways. To make excuses and to treat sin lightly. And um, uh, I <clears throat> once went to a, a buffet and there was a sign outside that said, um, this is all you can eat, but please don't waste food. Um, because even though it didn't cost the customer anymore, it costs the restaurant. Uh, it, it's a waste of food. And so um, sometimes uh, a person can go in and pile their plate with two mounds of food and then eat, just barely touch it and just eat a whole, leave a whole plate of wasted food. And it, it's a waste of food. It costs something, somebody something. And um, just because we're forgiven and Jesus paid for our sins doesn't mean that our sin doesn't have a cost to it. In, uh, in our church, we try to live by a phrase that the only thing serious is sin. But if I'm honest, uh, in reality, I've seen that I've fallen short of that and seen some sins as serious and some sins as not serious. Sometimes I've saying, oh, I felt like, oh, that's just a weakness. I'll hopefully you'll get better from that. Um, and other sins I've seen, oh, that's not that bad. You know, it should focus on the bigger things first. Um, and that has caused me to treat some of those sins lightly. And I've seen how it's hindered my progress in um, some areas and disappointed the Lord. So I wanted to um, share a few things about taking sin lightly that the Lord's put on my heart as I meditate on it, meditated on it. And the, the first was to, uh, is to meditate on what my sin did to Jesus. Uh, one thought that we can have is nobody's perfect. We all make many mistakes. And by the way, I've sinned millions of times in the past. What's one more sin? What difference does it make? Since we've all sinned sometimes, uh, and have such an amount of sin in our past, one more on our pile of sins is not a big deal. Um, Jesus already died on the cross for my sins. I'm forgiven. Um, so doesn't that mean one more sin isn't a big deal? But I believe that's like saying, uh, yeah, Jesus' crown of thorns had so many thorns on it. What's one more thorn? What, what's a big deal if I had one more thorn to it? Or Jesus had so many whiplashes on his back. Uh, what's, what's a big deal? Just one more whiplash. Um, I believe a, a, having a, a lax attitude, a light attitude towards sin is basically saying that it's not a big deal what I did to Jesus. Um, and do I really see that it was my sin that put him on the cross? My sin crucified Jesus. Uh, treating sin lightly is like saying that. Um, I, you know, my sins are like a, a thorn. And what's one more thorn uh, in my Savior's head? Uh, it's, it's not a big deal, but... 
if we really love someone, we hate what harms them. So if I really love the Lord, I'll hate what crucified him, and that's my sin. Uh, I read this story uh, recently of a man that who said he hated alcohol. He had an absolute disdain for alcohol. And then he said why, and it was because he saw how it ruined his dad's life. Um, and then as he grew up as a child, it ruined his life too. They had, they, um, he, there were times when he was homeless, his family life was chaotic. And so he saw how alcohol was the, he, he saw alcohol as the thing that just um, ruined their lives and hurt the ones that he loved. I mean, if I, if I had, so, if someone I loved was, for example, killed by a drunk driver, I think I would have such a disdain for alcohol too. Um, in the same way, my sin is what crucified my Savior, so if I, I should hate it with passion and never take it lightly and say, this, this sin that I see in myself, that's what put Jesus on the cross. That's what caused him, that's, that was a thorn in his head. Um, so I never want to take my sins lightly, no matter how small they seem, because they killed Jesus. <clears throat> and uh, secondly, uh, I've also seen that it's a temptation to think that sin won't really cause any harm to myself either. Uh, and kind of like this verse says, oh, we have the grace of God now, we can do whatever we want. Uh, I'm forgiven and going to heaven, why do we need to worry about sin so much now? Um, let's focus on other more important things. But Paul talked about that in Romans 6, if you just turn there. <clears throat> He's talking about that attitude in verse 15. He says, uh, we'll start from verse 10, 15 and read to 16. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? May it never be. Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness. So he's saying, are you going on sinning because you because God gave you grace? Don't deceive yourself. That means you're, you're a slave to sin. If you continue to sin after God gave you grace intentionally, um, then you're a slave to sin and the result of that is death. Uh, I... He's not talking about we all accidentally sin. I think he's talking about someone who has the mindset, I don't, well, God, uh, that, uh, that license to sin. I have a free, get out of sin free card now. I can sin all I want. Um, but for, he's not talking about sincere Christians who don't want to sin anymore. When, when people are baptized, when people ask us if they can be baptized, the main question we ask them is, do you want to sin anymore? That's the, the main thing. Um, but this is, uh, he Paul's addressing the people here who are saying, I'm under grace now. Praise God, I can continue to sin. Um, but uh, he, he's addressing those people and saying the result of that mindset is death. Um, and then saying he goes down, to, if, you turn to, if you go down a few verses to 21, Therefore, what benefit were you then, deriving from the things of which you are now ashamed, for the outcome of those things is death, but now having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit, resulting in sanctification and the outcome eternal life. The way I understand how we can paraphrase this is, all those sins in your past that you're ashamed of, what did you get from that besides just a little bit of momentary pleasure? You have nothing now. Um, uh, you had, If you continue in that, you'll get death, but you have nothing now from it. Um, but if you live to present your body to God by obeying him, you'll be sanctified, and the outcome is eternal life. So uh, he's saying with regard to having that attitude, uh, taking sin lightly, I think it's like he's saying, or it's like somebody saying, I've been in a lot of car accidents before, uh, and I'm still alive today, so I don't mind getting in another car accident. Um, I have insurance, so I'll keep driving as fast and as dangerously as I want. Um, but Paul here is saying, don't you see the outcome of that is death? Uh, yeah, you, you've been covered. Um, you have insurance, sure, but eventually you're going to die from uh, living like that. And uh, I think that's what Paul is saying here with regard to the sin. Um, and as far as I know, all of us here are sincere uh, Christians where we don't want to sin anymore. 
we want to live for God. Um, but I think I, I think this still applies. I've seen that this still applies to me because even though I, I don't want to sin generally, I've seen situations where I have that attitude where uh, it's, I'm, I'm too tired to think about praying right now. Um, I'm too, uh, yeah, I'm, I just don't, I don't have the energy to repent over my sin, to pour my heart towards God and try to overcome this right now. I'll just move on and hopefully it'll go away later. Um, that's a, the same mindset to continue. Jesus said, watch and pray um, to his disciples. And it's, uh, we're overcome when we uh, lose that. Or you say, I want to be careful. I mean, if, let's say that, um, I don't know if you guys have ever ridden in a car where the seatbelts didn't work. Uh, if, uh, if I ride in a car when the seatbelt doesn't work, I remember in India, the, um, I, when we visited, uh, the seatbelts were stuck down in the, the seat because nobody used them. And it was raining, and um, we were trying to get to the airport, and the driver was going pretty fast, maybe around 50 miles an hour. And um, I, we were trying desperately to get those seatbelts out. Um, and uh, I, uh, I told him, make sure to drive careful, please, um, because uh, this is dangerous. This is, uh, and so uh, I see that I want to have exactly the same attitude towards sin. I don't want to see one sin as not a big deal because I'm forgiven. I want to see the outcome of sin is death. I want to treat every sin like it's uh, the ultimate outcome of it is, is death. I'm nowhere near that, but um, that's where I want to get to. Uh, and, and the least I could do is to, when I see some sin, I've noticed the very first step I can take is to repent wholeheartedly over it um, and to take some time and meditate on how serious it was and to tell God I'm sorry for it. Too often I've seen I move on too easily after sin. I've seen I did something wrong and I said, oh, I'm sorry, God, just move on so quickly. Um, but uh, Lord, forgive me for that. I want to, um, that's not the attitude I want to have. Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn over their sin. I always want to have uh, uh, that attitude that sin is dangerous and costly. Um, <clears throat> I believe uh, one of the that one of the worst deceptions that Satan has brought into Christianity today is that it's it's not a big deal because we're already forgiven. Um, just focus on getting to heaven, uh, and that's enough. And then to, once you're in heaven, don't worry about your sin anymore. Now focus on getting others to heaven. Uh, that's the main thing. As long as you're in heaven, that's uh, you know you're in, so you're not safe, you're not going to hell anymore. So that's the main thing. Now, don't worry about your sin. God, Jesus covered that. Um, he did cover that, but um, God spoke to me in verse in uh, about that in John ten. Here, Jesus said, "I came for two reasons." John ten verse ten, one in the end of verse ten. Uh, verse 10 he says I came that may have they have that they may have life so that's the first reason he came that may have life and the second reason that they may have it abundantly so he was talking spiritually um, he didn't just come that we would be saved he would be he came that we would have uh, a life with God an abundant life with God a deep life with God um, we can go so much deeper into the Christian life than we ever thought possible uh, with what God provided, uh, we're if we're con it's it's a mistake to live content, thinking that well we'll be slaves for the rest of our lives to all these things. But um, I'm forgiven. That's the main thing. But God says no. There's a victory. There's an abundant life that you're missing. Jesus came for two reasons. One is to give us life, and then second, not just a little bit of life, but abundant life, a victorious life. Um, not just barely eking our way out of hell, finally just making it barely into heaven. And it's uh, it's like how no parent would be content with their child simply being alive. Like, as parents, I felt like when we first had our first son, 90% uh, 90, 90 of our efforts were just to keep him alive. Let's just make sure he has enough food, uh, make sure he's getting sleep and not getting dehydrated and... That he's you know sleeping on his back so he doesn't kind of roll over and suffocate like we just want to be alive but now uh we want to give him we want to prepare him for life we don't want, just want him to live till 80 we you know um it would i would think we would be failures if he lived to 80 but he was homeless and on drugs and um we want him to have an abundant life we don't want him to just uh kind of eke his way like wandering around no purpose 
we want him to live for God. Uh, we want him to build the church. We want him to. Uh, uh, we want him to love the Lord with all his heart, and we want all, all our kids for that. So, uh, in the same way, I think God has the same mindset for us. I'm not. He, he's like, I'm not content with my children just being spiritual beggars. Yeah, they're alive, but I don't want them to just be um, like spiritual homeless people uh, their whole life. No parent wants a mediocre life for their child. So um, God I wants us, he has a passion for us to live uh, in victory over our sin, close to him in fellowship with him. Getting to heaven is not enough. Um, so I never want to take sin lightly, and um, one of the one of the things that Brother Zach has said that stuck with me, with regard to our sin, that's really encouraged me, um, is the fact that you sin is not as serious as the fact that you don't weep over sin. That one that one really uh, touched me because it's encouraging the fact that I don't have to feel guilty over my sin in my past, but the question now is how will I respond to the times that I've sinned? Uh, it's, uh, am, do I really regret it? And if, like like Jesus said in Matthew 5, 4, blessed are those who mourn. And what, what does weeping over our sin mean? What does be, mourning over our sin mean? Uh, I believe Jesus was talking there, mourning over, blessed are those who mourn over their sin. I think that's what Jesus was talking about. Uh, I think it, Kind of, it means, it doesn't mean manufactured tears. Okay, I'm going to go try to cry now. Because uh, Jesus isn't fake. Uh, it, it's, that's, uh, that's fake. But I, I think it means to meditate on the seriousness of my sin and consider how bad it is, what my sin did to Jesus. Um, and to genuinely say, tell God I'm sorry and I don't want to, and to fight it. Um, repentance without, um, or uh, saying sorry without repenting is a false humility. Telling God I'm sorry for that without an intention to um, turn from it is uh, false humility. So I, um, so yeah, so I want to be always uh, taking my sin, looking at my sin saying, Lord, help me. Help me to be better. Help me to see the gravity of the seriousness of it. Another thing I've seen is that um, it's sometimes I don't generally know if something I did was a sin. What do we do when we're, we're not sure? Uh, maybe there's some vagueness there or, um, or maybe we're at a point where as far as we know, we're not in any conscious sin. Paul said that in uh, 1 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Um, I'll just turn there. He said, 1 Corinthians 4, 4, I am conscious of nothing against myself, yet I am not by this acquitted, but the one who examines me is the Lord. How uh, Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn. How could Paul mourn if over his sin if there was nothing that he was conscious of? I believe the answer to that is in 1 Timothy. We read about Paul's... Uh, how he looked at himself. There was nothing at the time that he um, knew he was consciously committing against God. But in 1 Timothy 1.15, he said, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, among who, whom I am the foremost of all. So even though Paul didn't wasn't conscious of anything that he was doing wrong at that moment, uh, he recognized he was the worst sinner ever. And I think that's the the balance uh, that that's the the paradox of our christian life is as far as we know we should be um not consciously walking in any sin but at the same time recognizing i'm the worst sinner ever and uh, i kind of think of it like the two legs uh, as far as i know i'm i'm not sinning against the lord but i'm the worst sinner ever and um and even even jesus he, it says about him, Hebrews 5, 7, that he wept uh, with loud crying and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. Because even though he wasn't a sinner, he had flesh that was tempted by sin. And so it's it's amazing to me these uh, that 
Paul and even Jesus um, wept. Uh, they, I mean, Jesus mourned without ever even sinning. He was uh, crying over the, um, not wanting to sin even once uh, because he had the temptation there. And he was saying, Father, help me. I can't do anything apart from you. It's amazing what, what Jesus did for us, coming here to take on our flesh, to become one of us. Like, I, I don't, um, I was thinking about this the other day. Jesus, he, it wasn't like he, he, he was forever with God in heaven, but it wasn't like he just came down temporarily to save us and then go back into the way things were before. No, he was, he said, I'm permanently going to become a man. I'm going to, I'm, my, I'm going to tie myself in with mankind forever. From here on out, things, never, things are never going to be the same. I'm going to tie my fate with their fate. Um, I, I believe that if Jesus would have sinned, not only would we have gone to hell forever, I think he would have too, because he tied himself to us. Um, it, uh, we, we sometimes think, yeah, Jesus is God. We know that he is fully God. He's the son of God. Um, but he chose to permanently become one of us. And he's going to be a man forever. He wasn't a man before he came to earth, but he's definitely a man now forever. He, he took that on. That's what he did for us. And um, so when he came, he got our flesh that had a different will um, than his father's sometimes. He said, not my will, but yours be done. I see two wills there. So there was a will of his own that he had to um, deny. And uh, yeah, as I meditated on these things, it helps me appreciate more what God did for me and, um, uh, and to want to um, take my sin more seriously. And uh, like like we talked about earlier in Romans 6.14, that God has given us that power to be able to uh, successfully decide, I want to be done with this. I want to honor God. Um, uh, I, the, the clearest verse to me I can think of of, of God's grace, uh, the power that comes with God's grace is 2 Corinthians 9.8. <clears throat> Another wonderful promise we memorized uh, this year. God is able to make all grace abound to you. So he's talking about his grace, all grace, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. Grace, his grace is what gives all for sufficiency for everything, um, giving an abundance for every good, good deed. So we can make that decision because he gave us his, his grace. <clears throat> Praise God.